What's up guys? We're back. If you can do me a favor, if you enjoy this video, click the like button, subscribe so I can make more content. Um, today, our caption, if you read below, it says how to successfully keep an all-male peacock in half tank. I have a 75 gallon. First of all, let's talk about where I started. Now, my, when I first entered the hobby about four or five years ago, I bought three tanks, a 75 gallon, a 46, and a 55. And I had a 75 gallon, and I thought the most beautiful fish were peacocks. They're my favorite, one of my favorite fish, absolutely, to this day. So I jumped right into doing an all male peacock tank, and I'll, sh I'll, I'll see if I can find an old video. And attach what it looked like but let me give you a set the script i had uh gravel rock gravel in the bottom i had cichlid stones um for the fish to create hides that did not work for me um let me tell you why the hides became territories they they the fish you like these fish they're swimming around the whole tank that was not the situation in this tank they all had their own corner or cichlid stone or the top left or the top right of the tank and they did not mingle whatsoever i also my filtration on that tank was two aqua clear 110s which was probably sufficient but it didn't have enough surface agitation um, the types of Africans I bought I didn't just do peacocks or haps I was adding like acais in and it was just a really bad situation it lasted a little bit but my fish were just never thriving never fully colored up let me tell you what I do now on this tank this is a 75 gallon as well but I got, I over filter my, my tanks. Now I probably don't need, I have a FX6 and a FX4 and I probably only need one of those. But by ha I, I always believe in keeping two filtrations on the tank in case one of them fell. I mean, I got $1,000 to $1,500 in fish in this tank. That'd be an expensive loss if one of those filtration systems failed and my fish died so I, I'm firm believer in having backup so I got FX6 and a FX4 and all that does for me guys yeah I have a ton of biomedia in there I took out a few sponges I took out the carbon and I just filled it up with biomedia and so what is created for me I only have to do a canister and most people they complain about FX6 X4 any canister they don't enjoy cleaning it and I personally don't think it's that bad but the cool thing about having an FX6 and a FX4 on this tank is that I only have to clean it every six months and even when I'm cleaning it at six months and typically I don't tell people to have a, a set date to clean it if you can see over here in the corners right here's one and right over here is another one I have a pre-filter on my filtration system so that catches mo the majority of the poop and just maybe once a week when I do the water change sometimes once a month I'll clean those pre-filters out to get all the poop out um, but I, I can't say enough about the FX6 and FX4 I love it and it keeps the water so here's the this tank also, instead of having a rock gravel, I decided to go all out. I knew it was going to be a, a peacock hat tank, and I used a ragonite. So my my pH out the tap is about six to six point five now, and you know Africans they want up to eight to eight point two, and there's in my water super soft, no hardness. So everything you think would be bad for a cichlid environment. Um, is my water <laughs> so we have to do some things I don't like chemical fi filtration and I don't like chasing pH but I want it to be stable 
before I did, I, I would use Aragonite in the Aqua Clear 110 to buffer, but I was only able to get the pH about 7.5. By having all this Aragonite in the tank, I'm able to get up to 8, 8.2. And but there is a downfall to the Aragonite. The fish sift it constantly, and when the fish are constantly sifting that Aragonite, it clouds up the water. I'm not exactly sure why, because the Aragonite. Well, actually, I do know why, because the Aragonite is, is crushed coral and is is breaking down constantly. So every time they sift it, some of those particles get into the air and you'll see in this video, I'm sure they're scooping it up. They'll bring it to the top of the tank and drop it. And you can see over in that filter, pre-filter on the left side as well. That's another good thing about the pre-filter. It catches that aragonite. But the aragonite uh, buffers the pH and it keeps it stable. Um, so how did I add the fish? With this tank was previously set up and fully cycled with guppies and angelfish and I, I'd done several different types with the tank and when I switched it out to the peacocks and haps I didn't have any fish but it was already cycled and I got rid of my fish the same weekend and had fish on the way. I had 10 fish I ordered from G&G &G Cichlids and he's a good dude. A couple of his fish he sent me, uh, you'll notice, well, I don't have them anymore, but they had defects. Uh, sometimes a fish, the side of his face, like in the front, will have like a dent in it. And that's a typical thing with peacocks and haps, but usually they're cold. They won't sell that fish, but he did sell me that fish. But he also sold me some amazing fish. You can see both of my um, Z Rocks that I have in this tank are stunners. And I got both of those from him. I also have a Dragon Blood in here. The less red one right there in the middle of the tank, um, that's one I got from GNG. The one that has the red, red, blue Dragon Blood up here and right here, this guy. He's from Imperial Tropicals. I do prefer him, but not to take anything from the one from GG. He's beautiful. But anyways, I ordered 10 fish from GNG Cichlids. And typically, you would want to wait about a month so your tank can acclimate. Uh, so your beneficial bacteria can catch up and be able to handle that load. But I had already previously had so many fish in here. I went ahead and ordered 10 more. And so I had 20 fish initially in this tank and it, I was quite concerned about it. I wasn't sure how the tank was going to react because I know these guys poop a lot. But I checked the nitrates or the ammonia levels, the nitrites and nitrates every day for the first couple weeks and found out it was fine. Uh, after, so I had 20 and anytime you add fish to this tank, like I just recently added four, and there's always going to be aggression because there's a hierarchy. Where's my tank boss? You see this this uh, this guy right here? He's my tank boss. Amazing tank boss. He's a red shoulder I got from Imperial Tropicals. He's not as big as a lot of the fish, but nobody messes with him. He, he is definitely the boss. And sometimes in the evening, you see these holes over here on the left side? He dug that. And, I'm, and the OB over there, that's my older OB in the back. He is uh, number two in the tank. And you can tell the hierarchy. I mean, you really can. Typically, the, the two fish that are always fighting, and they won't ever mess with the guys above them. And you can pretty much pick them all the way down to the bottom. And usually the bottom fish is going to be the least colored up fish. Probably my albino turkis over here in the corner um, that I got from Imperial. But he's about two and a half, three inches. He's real small. And he's just starting to color up. I got him from Imperial also, and I love him. But so you get, I got the four OBs. Um, put them in there, and the the old OB, not 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 this one, but the old one down here. Um, he was super aggressive. He was pissed. <laughs> so what you do is you cover the tank completely 
with towels or a blanket and lights out for two days. I did two days. And when I come back, they, they, it was nothing nearly as bad. You'll see they, they chase a little bit, but that's typical peacocks and haps. You got to be ready for that. A lot of people do not like that. But just as long as you turn the lights out two days and black it out, you're good. Um, now let's talk about bullies and aggression because I've had a few. Bullies. I've had three. I've had both my Dragon Bloods, one from G&G, &G, one from Imperial. When I the, the one from Imperial was just vicious. He was so mean. And, and so we had the one tank, and he didn't mess with my tank boss. He was number two in line. Um, he didn't mess with the uh, red shoulder. So the red shoulder would have the right side blocked. And the, the dragon blood on the left side, he would have him blocked. So all the fish were stuck in the middle. I lost the fish. And I seen who did it. It was the dragon blood. The the red shoulder, although still the boss, he's not a murderer. The pink dragon blood killed a fish immediately. I seen it happen. He was missing an eye. And so I I scooped him up and I watched a hundred videos and everybody's like, just quarantine him, give him his own tank for a month, and then put him back and see. Don't do that, guys. Don't do that. It's just entirely too much stress. You're, you're taking up a tank. Unless you have an empty tank, you're taking up a tank for a month. And when as soon as I put the fish back in the tank, he did. He just, it's same thing. Immediately was aggressive. I gave him a few days too. He didn't kill anybody initially, but he was just super aggressive to where my Eureka Red, not this one over here, but the one I got from Imperial, he was beat up so bad, I, I wasn't able to save him. He wasn't murdered, but he was picked on, and I was watching it, and I, I didn't catch him getting picked on extremely bad until it was too late, and I separated him, and I gave him uh, a few weeks, and he just passed, unfortunately. But bullies, get rid of them. Now, I'm not saying put 10 new fish in the tank, and you see you got a bully day one, I'm saying if you see a fish constantly murdering or because you're going to lose a couple fish in this too as well, guys. Um, I've lost, I think, four or five since last year. And it was the, it was the dragon blood. Uh, and then the other dragon blood. So I got rid of the first one. And the second dragon blood, which seemed to be docile as he got bigger... He became aggressive. Now, I'm not saying all dragon bloods are going to be your problem, but this just happened to be the two fish that I had a problem. When I first done my first tank years ago, guys, it was the OBs. The OBs were so aggressive, he ended up killing the whole tank off. I mean, and it, it was a matter of days. And I wasn't experienced enough to know how to handle the situation back then, unfortunately. So I, I think this isn't. And when they say it's an intermediate fish, you need to be in this hobby for a while and understand nitrates because you got to understand bullies and aggression. Get rid of those bullies, guys. Don't keep them. I know you spent $30, $40 on that fish and you're like, that dragon blood from Imperial Tropicals, it was a special, it was called a red dot or a black dot dragon blood and he was the most beautiful i'll see if i can find a picture of him he's the prettiest dragon blood i ever see his face was white um and phenomenal quality fish but he's just he was a murderer so i got rid of him got rid of the second uh bully and i haven't had any issues with i mean yeah occasionally you'll see one that has like a little nick in the side of them but nothing too extreme they they do chase each other and every so often they'll hit one you know it's just what they do um now let's talk about water changes with these fish as you can see I, i'm not i think i'm overstocked i got 25 26 peacock and haps in this tank and but i've seen them with 30 to 35 and up but 
water changes is important. So you gotta test your nitrates. You gotta test it when you first set the tank up. You gotta test it for a few weeks. Um, and the way you know how much water you have to change, let's say you're at 80 parts per million the day before water change. If you do a 50% water change, you're gonna be at 40 parts per million. Now, preferably in a perfect world, I would say you don't wanna go above 80, but I've also seen research with tanks with thousands, but then you, you're talking, it's a whole nother ball game. You know, you're talking about new tank syndrome, old tank syndrome type situation, but that's for another video. Um, I do a 75% water change on this tank once a week. I was doing two 50s a week and I was keeping my nitrates below 40. But I noticed once I, mine don't ever get to 80 because I don't feed overwhelmingly. You feed once a day. Um, now I've heard people saying smaller fish need to be fit, fed more often. Yes, I, I also have uh, I, I caught a female in this tank, unfortunately, which caused a bunch of aggression as well. And she had eggs. So I stripped her of her eggs and I got 30 OBs and a 10 gallon in there and I'm raising up. And yes, I three, feed them three times a day, but it's very light, you know, because the more you feed, the more they poop, the more they pee, the more ammonia it creates, the bacteria breaks down nitrites, nitrates. It, it can build up very fast. But when people are like, how much water should I change? Well, we don't know. How much nitrates are in your water? You have to determine that for yourself. You gotta get in there and see after you did your, and sometimes, you know, like in my situation, I have five parts per million nitrates in out of my tap, my well water. Um, so you have to count that as well. But you just don't want your nitrates to get out of hand because the, the clearer, the better quality the water, the, the better experience your fish are going to have, the better color they're going to show. Um, what else? What else, guys? So I, I also, so I said I don't do chemical filtration. And when I say that, I only use Prime. I don't use Safe. I don't use any water chlorinator because let's say you don't have chlorine or chloramine in your water that comes out the ground because I have a well. I'm not run off city. It creates nitrates. Um, because that's another video as well, I'm gonna save, but you don't need that stuff if you're running off a well. Some people are like, well, what about the hard minerals? I, well, these fish, I actually add cichlid lake salt and cichlid trace, which are trace elements from that they find in the wild in Lake Malawi. So, I don't know guys. These fish, although they seem very difficult to keep, they are so worth it. Check this out, watch this. I mean, watch this. Look at it. Coolest fish, they're like big puppy dogs. And you see the color give it a try, but I, I would definitely not jump straight into it if you're a beginner. You need to understand what's going on in the tank. <clears throat> what else? I think that's it, guys. Is it feeding time? If you have any more questions or comments, drop them down in the below, guys. Thank you for watching. Peace.